So here we are. Um, another feature that I have on my bench is I have a Dillon Super Swager 600. Now, what is a swager? A swager is a device that's used to remove the, the military crimp or crimp that you have in some 5.56 brass, some 9mm brass, 308 brass, anything that the military would use. So 945, um, what do you call it? 945, 5.56, 7.60 by 5.1. And there's a couple other ones out there. Some of the, um, the federal brasses also has a crimp in it as well. So what happens is we're going to want to go ahead and deprime the brass which we will go ahead and grab our handy dandy Frankfurt Arsenal handy primer I'll deprime a couple pieces of brass and go ahead and show you the crimp now oh, this piece of brass has a little bit of a messed up neck it's probably not gonna, oh no, it went off, it might let me Sometimes it won't. Oh, there it is. There we go. Just a little pain to get off, but not a big deal. There we go. Now we got three pieces of brass. So what's going to happen is if you look really close, I'm not sure if it's focusing in on the piece of brass or not. There's a little ring inside of the primer pocket. I'll actually show you a couple of them. There's a ring in the primer pocket. So what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and remove that ring. We'll slide it on the swager. Line it up. Put the handle down. And what it's doing is, is it's taking a ram. It's pushing the ram into the pocket to expand the pocket. It's not removing any material. It's simply reforming the brass to give it a, a, a wider primer pocket. There's one, I'll do one more, and then I'll show you the difference between the two. So if we go ahead and take a look at these primer pockets, you will go ahead and see that one still has the ring, and the other is a nice little bit wider pocket. The Super Swager swages the brass, removes the military crimp, so that you can go ahead and seat a primer in. They put the crimp in the pocket so that the uh, the pressures, because the usually military uh, ammunition is loaded to a higher pressure, they do that so that either while it's being pushed to the limit on pressure, or maybe it's being vibrated because of it's being fired through a machine gun or a fully automatic, it prevents the primers from being popped out or vibrate out or anything like that. So a swager is a good tool to have. I know personally that um, I have two of these. I have one on the other side of the bench that does uh, 308s for me or any large primer pocket. And um, I have another one that my pops has back home that I had set up for nine millimeter. And it was nine millimeter with an adapter for 45. So I don't see the nine or the 45 all that much, but the 5.56 and the 7.60 by 5.1 are two that I see the most. So that's why I have them set up here on the benches for. So these run about 150 bucks ish. Um, I know you can get them for between 80 and 90 bucks used. Highly recommend this particular brand because it's easy. It's on bench. There's a couple spring mods that you can do so that'll fling it backwards into a bin. Um, I do know that just about every manufacturer out there does make one. Um, even on some of the progressives. On one of my older Dillon 650s, I had some parts made up so that uh, I reinforced the ram and the handle uh, area with uh, the, the two arms so that I can go ahead and I use it strictly for just swaging brass. Um, I didn't have a 1050 at the time, but that press is so beefed up and so old. Like, I don't really care what happens. If it breaks, it's fine. I'll go back. I'll go to a 1050 at this point. But um, there's an on-press swager there. Um, RCBS has a swager for a single stage that you can use. Um, I know there's another one. I don't remember offhand what it is, but I know that like just about every manufacturer in some capacity has some sort of swager. They also have the cutters. I had mentioned uh, before, or I'll mention in an upcoming seg segment here, um, the Frankfurt Arsenal case prep machine has a uh, utility that will allow you to cut the primer pocket out. I'm not a fan of removing material if you don't have to. That's why the swager, I like that it that uses the ram to go ahead and open that pocket up rather than remove material. Because if you remove material, you run a risk of the chance that you might remove too much. Um, 
that's just my two cents. So Dylan Super Swager, that's my Swager of choice. Um, especially if you're loading military brass. So make sure you have one of these on hand. Trimmers come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, they come in the manual variety, the powered assisted with a drill, a motorized one like a Gerard, or ones you put in drill presses like the world's finest trimmer. Um, there's lots of different uh, ways you can go about doing this. Um, on my bench, I prefer to have um, some sort of mechanized electric trimmer um, just because of the fact that they're so versatile. Uh, in this case here, you know, I've I've tried a couple of them. I, I do prefer and like the Frankfurt Arsenal Platinum Case Prep Machine. It allows you to do a couple things. It allows you to essentially trim any piece of brass that's got a shoulder on it. So no pistol brass, which most of the time you don't have to trim anyway. Uh, it allows you to uh, remove burrs from the outside of the case. allows you to deburr and decamp for the inside of the case. And even a primer pocket or in some cases a primer cutter for those, um, what do you call it? The... Um, crimp primer pockets. So not a bad idea to have. Um, I particularly like this one. This one's been around a long time with me. Um, I, I find some sort of tray all the time. I've seen a couple 3D printed trays. I haven't had time to pick one up. Um, I do all of my precision brass on one of these just because I don't do a lot of volume with it. It's nice. It's simple. It's very accurate. I use my calipers to make sure I'm measuring it right. Um, it's it's uh, I think these run about 180 bucks retail. You can get them for as cheap as 120 bucks, used to 100 bucks or something like that. So I can't speak uh, any greater about um, Frankfurt Arsenal and a lot of their products. You, you've seen in some of what I've shown you today. I do own a lot of them. They are they're simple, they're cheap, they're effective. This trimmer is no exception, except it's a little expensive. But I can tell you, I do like it. Um, the smallest cartridge I think I do on this is the 300 Blackout. Um, and the biggest I know I've done on this is the 300 wind mag. So, Frankfurt Arsenal Platinum Case Prep Machine. Um, definitely an asset to your bench. The first, maybe the second most important thing to have on your bench is some sort of good scale. Whether it be a beam scale or an electronic scale. Um, I, I religiously go ahead and compare my electronic scale to my... To my um, my manual beam scale, just to make sure that the they're cl extremely close. I mean, in my case, I, I've got the Dillon Precision Exterminator beam scale, uh, and then I also have the RCBS Charge Master 1500. This is the older version. Uh, I've tried the light version. Um, I don't really see much of a difference. To me, this seems to go a little bit faster though with the 1500 versus the light, but they do an excellent job. Um, having a good working scale to measure that powder to identify bullets is absolutely paramount make sure whatever your combination is is something that you trust check it against check your electronics against your beam check your beam to another beam scale whatever whatever makes you content um, to me between this and the calipers they're probably my two my two main assets here in the dungeon um, the, there is no room, in my opinion, for skimping on this because if you get a case that's close to maximum and your one of your scales is off by a grain or two, you could start to see signs of pressure. It might be too much if you're already teetering at the high end. Um, I highly recommend that whatever scale you pick up is one that you are comfortable with. You paid enough money that, that's, that has like a security to you that says, I do trust it. And they do fail. I want to make sure that's very well known. Calipers can fail. These scales can fail. I do check them every single time I sit down to go ahead and reload anything precision or anything that is going to be close to the maximum, uh, the maximum pressures allowed in the books. So hands down, get a good scale. I'm, I'm not going to, going to call out any, any names of any brands of anything. If you're happy and if you're comfortable and you've checked whatever it is you've got against something else and it's it's good, it's right on, it's within like, you know, 0.1 grains or a couple grains, whatever, what, or a tenth of a grain or a hundredth of a grain, then good. That's I want you to make sure you know that you're comfortable with that. And my only recommendation is, again, not if it's close to maximum. Make sure you do trust your equipment and that you do test it regularly. So 
having a good scale system. I do have both. I, I, I highly recommend, and I will always fail safe back to a beam scale if for any reason I feel like my electronic scale is not, not functioning properly. It's a better safe than sorry situation. Um, I do have an RCBS 505 scale as well uh, that's not here. It's actually put away. It's never been used to load. It's only been used to verify these two work. So it's a, it's, it's a non-workhorse. It's just a pure measurement device. Um, so again, beam scale and a good set of calipers are probably the two. Number one and number two, pick your order to make sure that you are getting things into spec that your powder and the, your powder is the right charge weight, that you're using the correct bullets. Verify your bullet weights. Have you ever opened a box of bullets and, and weighed each of them to see if they're all identical? Most of the match ones are pretty close, usually within 0.1 of each other, plus or minus 0.1. But open a box of you know target bullets or something that's very generic, like maybe the Hornady 55 grain for the, two, the, the 223 or the 556. Go ahead and weigh those and see what kind of fluctuation or, or variance there is in those. You can use the scales to tell you. And that's definitely one of the things I do when it comes to precision. I do weigh and separate my bullets by category. Um, but again, these are probably the top two things right here I recommend to have on your bench and make sure they're good. One final thing I'm going to leave you guys with is your reloading manual. My opinion, strictly my opinion, you can never have too many reloading manuals or uh, resources for loading. Um, the reloading manuals are published data. That means these companies spent lots of money and lots of time developing load data so that you don't have to. They give you, in most cases, a minimum spec and a maximum spec. And each book is different. So they'll tell you the dimensions of a case. They'll tell you the trim lengths of a case. Make sure when you're sizing it that you get it proper. They also tell you based off of what bullet weight, what specific bullet right down to the specific bullets in these manuals. I'm gonna give you guys an example. I'm gonna look at a 55 grain full metal jacket uh, boat tail. And we're gonna see if it's in both books. I'm gonna say the Hornady because it's the most common. So we we'll go ahead and flip through the book. 223 Remington. Let's see if it has 556 just for the fun of it real quick. Some of these males sometimes might have different load data for an AR-15, aka the 5.56 caliber. Let me just see if this one has it. It doesn't look like it does. Just scrolling all the way back there because I want to make sure I'm there. Never asked myself this question, so why not do it on camera, right? All right, we're going to go ahead and just do the 223 Remington. 55 grain, full metal jacket. So the Lyman book, oh, that's the wrong one. 22 PPC, 223 Remington, 22243, 22224 Weatherby. Here we go. This has, for the 223 Remington, a 55 grain. Doesn't have a, a full metal jacket. So we'll go with jacketed soft point. That happens to be in here. So the jacketed soft point load data is here based on this it doesn't tell you what brand it just tells you it's a jacketed SPT we have our powder we have our starting suggested starting grains our max load an estimated velocity and maximum velocity and the information this is one of the important things I want to show you the information that they use what firearm did they use to test this data well, in this case here, they used Remington cases. They trimmed the brass to 1.750. The primers were a Remington 7.5. Primer size, small rifle. They actually tell you what Lyman shell holder to use for the case. That's pretty cool. I never really saw that. And then it tells you specifically now the jack, uh, the bullets that were used. Now, the 55 grain is the Sierra Soft Point. Model number 1360 in the 55 grain. Now it's been very specific. It's told you exactly what bullet it is. Also coming down, it tells us, uh, oh, there's cast bullets. There's cast bullet data in the Lyman. So that's a good thing to know. The firearm used was a universal receiver Colt AR-15 with a 24-inch barrel with a 1 in 12 twist. 
and a one and seven twist. So they did do it with two different, two different, yep, a barrel, an upper, a uh, universal receiver of one and 12, yep, so one and 12 inch twist, and then a Colt AR-15 with a one and seven twist. So the one and 12 twist is probably gonna be used for the lighter bullets. More than likely, the 35 grain to, I'd say maybe no more than 60 grain, I think 60 is at the top. If you've ever seen that Venn diagram that showed you that, I'll see if I can put it up here on the video for you. Um, it'll go ahead and show you what your twist rate should be. Uh, the one and seven twist is usually used for heavier bullets. That's usually minimum 55 grain all the way up to, and the load data for this says all the way up to 90 grain jacketed hollow point bow tails. So some good information. Now that was the Lyman book. Let's check out the Hornady book. They used a bunch of Sierra bullets in, in the uh, Lyman book. I have a feeling in the Hornady book, they're going to use exclusively Hornady bullets. Let's find out. <clears throat> now I do know in this book that they do have a 5.5, they have a 5.56, there it is, 5.56 NATO. So there is that, that's the higher pressure, that means you have to use a 5.56 case, not a 2G3 Remington case. Then also in the book here, if we go back a couple pages, there's a 2G3 rifle, service rifle data, so that's a military rifle that is chambered in 2G3 Remington. It's my assumption. And then back here we have the standard 223 Remington. So this is a book that has a bunch of information about it. And in each of these cases, there was a Remington 700 used in the, Rem uh, the 223 Remington. In the Remington service rifle, an Colt AR-15 Citadel was used. A 20 inch barrel with a one in nine twist. And in the 5.56 data, it's a Bushmaster, 20 inch barrel, one and seven twist. So these are very important things to know, but there's two different books. Why have more than one book? Because you have lots of more data that you can look at. Um, I think over on the shelf, I've got nine different books. Uh, I have the Lyman 40, 48th, 49th, 50th. There's three right there. This is the Hornady 9th edition. My 10th edition is in route. Um, I also have the Sierra manual version, uh, the 5th edition of that. And I just picked up. And this is where things become diverse, not just on the manual side, on my phone, which is actually what we're using to record this video with, has the Sierra online manual. It's like five bucks a year for a subscription. All the latest and greatest data, I don't think Sierra's put a book out in a couple years. That's a good note to have. You don't just have to have books. There's other resources out there. Um, I'll go ahead and try to put some in the, con in the description of some of the other places that I look for load data. Some of them can be based off of the projectile manufacturers. Some of them can be based off the powder. But let's look at the 5.56 data. 5.56 data with a 55 grain full metal jacket. They don't have it in the 5.56 NATO. So we'll go back to the 2.23 because that's essentially what we had over here. 2.23 Remington. 55. 53. Here we go. 55 grain full metal jacket boat tail WC with cantalore. WC means with cantalore. And then if we compare, you know, I, I'll use an example. So I use CFE 223 for the powder in, in most of my uh, 55 grain full metal jacket. It has a starting load of 24.8 and a max load of 27.4. I know mine happens to be 26.2, but that's just me. We got that information. Let's see if CFE 223 is listed in here. I don't recall it was. But again, it's just another example, another reason why to go ahead and have multiple books. 55 grain? Oh, it does. So in this, uh, the other one was 24.8 was the starting value. In this manual, it's 26 grains uh, for CFE 223 with a highest of 27.8. So a higher starting and a higher max. But that's based off of Lyman. This is what Lyman's putting their name on. So it's not a bad idea to make sure you have more than one manual to go ahead and give you that kind of information because look what your rifle is. Look what your firearm is. It'll help you make that determination of will this book work? Will this book work? Or will some combination in between work? I guarantee you'll get a place to start. And remember, if you're ever concerned about where you're going or if you were looking at one book or another, I always recommend starting at the lower of the numbers and working up. 
never going to hurt you. And if uh, one book is really close to one book's maximum, there are a few I've seen that with, start 10% less than the lower one. That's my recommendation. So having good and multiple reloading manuals or resources is great. The I know the Hodgkins page, um, Hodgkins Reloading is one that I use quite frequently to give people some starting points uh, right from their data. I can send them a screenshot. People are happy with that. Then they are very comfortable because, again, it has Hodgkins name on it. Not Pugs, not the Dungeon Reloading. That information for each of my loads is for me. It's tailored to my stuff, to each of my rifles individually. So have no fear. Get, get some multiple books. Look some multiple sources. And recommendation this is a pro tip do not take somebody else's load data and start there look at somebody else's load data compare it to the manual's minimum if it's close okay just make sure it's nowhere near maximum when you start and how i ladder test is by 0.3 grains i do about five shots of each all the way up and i also measure my bullets to make sure they're all the same weight when i measure them so i keep them consistent so again that's pro tip number two in just this one clip so multiple load manuals, sounds good. So I just went over a bunch of information with you guys. Uh, I didn't want to get too detailed into it. I just kind of wanted to present to you guys some of the things that are key for me. Um, lots, lots of information can be done with these. Uh, based on your comments below, you know, tell me what you guys use. Tell me what, um, you know, of the items that I have. Or if you've got suggestions for me to try, I'm always open to try new things. This is just what we have here in the dungeon, what we've tested, abused. It works for us. Um, but again, we're always looking to evolve and become more efficient and, you know, get products that, you know, continue to, you know, change the landscape of technology in something as simple as reloading. So in the comments, go ahead and let me know some stuff you liked about what you saw, about what you didn't like what you saw. How about some suggesting some new stuff for us? We'd love to try some stuff. We have no problem picking it up. We don't have any sponsors or anything. We'll pick it up with our own money. And maybe we'll do a video about it. Also, if you like this video, go ahead and give a little thumbs up in the video below. And if you like what we're doing here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We've got plenty more videos coming up. So just wanted to say thank you guys for stopping by, watching. And, you know, come on back to the dungeon anytime, and we'll go ahead and see what we can learn then. Have a great day, guys.